22 shocking historical facts forbidden to teach in schools. The real life of pirates, the secrets of George Washington's teeth, the fire that engulfed all of London, the horrific famine in Bengal, India. All these fascinating historical truths I guarantee no one has told you. Join me to uncover 23 strangely intriguing historical facts that you may have never heard in your lifetime. Number 22. The capital of England, London, engulfed in flames. On September 2nd, 1666, a small fire broke out at the bakery of Thomas Farriner. After Thomas Bloodworth, the mayor of London at the time, arrived to inspect the fire, he nonchalantly shrugged, declaring nothing serious and went back home to sleep. However, a strong east wind arose, carrying the flames from the bakery to neighboring houses, eventually consuming three quarters of the city of London, England, over the course of five days. The result was the complete destruction of the inner part of London, incinerating 13,200 houses, 87 parish churches St. Paul's Cathedral, and most of the city's government buildings. It is estimated that it annihilated the homes of around 80,000 city residents. The initial material damage was estimated at about PS1000 million at the time. Approximately 100,000 people were rendered homeless. Nearly 162,000 square meters of the city area were reduced to ashes, leaving behind a blackened desolate landscape and charred remnants of once thriving wooden structures. Indeed, it was a horrifying event, wasn't it? What are your thoughts on this largest fire in England's history? Feel free to comment below. Number 21. The Self-Inflicted Battle. In 1788, the Austrian Empire declared war against the Ottoman Empire. At that time, the Austrian army, consisting of around 100,000 soldiers, advanced to the town of Karansabis to confront the Turkish forces. However, due to excessive alcohol consumption and revelry among the Austrian troops that night, they mistakenly started attacking each other, thinking they were the Turkish army. The Austrian soldiers argued amongst themselves and engaged in combat amidst thousands of confused and panicked soldiers, unaware that they were fighting their own comrades. Everything fell apart the morning after the sunrise. It was as if witnessing a blood-soaked scene, with about 10,000 Austrian soldiers killed or wounded, and not a single trace of any Turkish soldiers. What's even more noteworthy is that two days later, the Turkish army officially appeared, effortlessly dispersing the remnants of the Austrian forces and occupying the Karansby region without firing a single bullet. Number 20. Leprosy in Hawaii. In the mid to late 1800s, leprosy became an incurable epidemic in the Hawaiian Islands, marking one of the most horrifying incidents in history. Very little was known about the disease during that period. In addition to its debilitating effects such as nerve damage, loss of muscle control, blindness and skin ulcers, leprosy also caused limb damage, leading patients to amputate their own limbs. Leprosy truly alarmed Europeans and Americans during that era as they found the images of the disease repulsive. White missionaries and businessmen living in Hawaii leveraged their connections with the government to criminalize leprosy. The efforts to curb the spread of leprosy in 1866 resulted in many infected individuals facing exile, they established a quarantine zone on the island of Molokai in the Hawaiian archipelago. Those afflicted by the disease were hunted down, and some were even captured by bounty hunters. If someone was declared a leper, they were sent to Kalopapapa in the Hawaiian Islands to die. Many families there were shattered due to isolation, never to reunite again. Number 19. The Battle of Atu in World War II. The Battle of Attu was the only land battle of World War II to take place on American soil. This fierce battle occurred between the United States and Japanese forces, involving intense bloodshed with the use of grenades, samurai swords and bayonets. The battle took place from May 11th to May 30th, 1943, lasting only a few weeks. However, the brutality of this conflict is something both Japanese and American soldiers would never forget. The war erupted when Japanese forces invaded the island of Attu in Alaska, where the Aleutian tribes had resided for centuries. The Japanese army advanced into the icy terrain of the village of Attu and ruthlessly killed the native inhabitants without reason. 
Moreover, they captured the native Aleutians, treating them like animals in prisoner of war camps. When the war ended, the survivors were returned to their village, but the war had devastated everything. Today, the people of Atu still live scattered in the land of their ancestors, but they are on the brink of extinction. Number 18. The most devastating storm in US history. The storm that hit Galveston in the 1900s stands as the worst natural disaster in US history. The hurricane destroyed 7,000 buildings, including 3,636 residential structures. Nearly 10,000 people lost their homes, and approximately 6,000 to 12,000 people lost their lives. The winds during the storm were estimated to reach speeds of up to 230 kilometers per hour when it made landfall on September 8th. The storm surge flooded the entire island. There are stories that, under the force of the storm, roof tiles could become lethal projectiles, flying off houses like bullets. Property damage from the storm was estimated to be around $20 to $35 million in 1900, equivalent to over a billion dollars today. Number 17. The syphilis epidemic of 1494. In 1494, Europe experienced a surge in syphilis cases during the Italian Renaissance. The Renaissance, often romanticized, had a dark side that is less known. In 1492, Columbus crossed the Atlantic and discovered the Americas, but upon his return from this historic voyage, he also brought the Treponema pallidum bacteria, causing syphilis, which spread throughout the French army. Later, the army carried what was then known as the Great Pox to the rest of Europe. In an era without antibiotics, the disease could spread uncontrollably, and its effects were excruciating. The skin on the face of the victims would essentially rot away with horrendous ulcers. In some cases, the nose, lips, or other affected body parts would essentially disappear, and some victims eventually died from the disease. Number 16. Medicine made from human flesh and bones. In the early 16th century, extending to the mid-17th century, the use of corpses for medicinal purposes reached its peak. Physicians tasked with caring for the health of members of the English royal family, as well as personal doctors to emperors, queens and court officials in France, Italy, Spain, Austria, and more, frequently employed remedies containing bones and fat from human bodies to treat various ailments, from headaches, fever, coughs, joint pain to seizures. Archaeological excavations reveal that many corpses were mistreated by medical practitioners of that time. Some bodies were missing skulls, leg bones, and pelvic bones. Some corpses still had skulls, but the skull caps were cut open to extract the brain. Another reason why human skeletons were considered powerful was because they were believed to contain the soul of the deceased. Perhaps that's why in ancient Rome, aristocrats would divide the brains of fallen gladiators among themselves, thinking that consuming it would give them added vitality. Number 15. The real life of pirates. Any pirate enthusiasts here? Comment and let me know. Throughout the 17th and 18th centuries, ruthless and brutal pirates were notorious criminals in maritime regions worldwide. They carried out numerous attacks, plundering ships carrying goods, gold and silver. Living outside the law, life on a pirate ship was far from luxurious. Each pirate ship had a captain who established rules and regulations on board. Based on hierarchy, pirates had to adhere to these rules. Any pirate who violated the rules faced beating, starvation, torture, or even death. Living on a ship meant pirates often lacked fresh water, food, medicine, and many died from diseases without timely medical treatment. Their bodies were often thrown into the sea. Moreover, many pirates were captured by naval forces during crime crackdowns. After being captured, they often faced severe punishments such as imprisonment or execution for the crimes they committed. After hearing all this, does anyone still want to become a pirate? Number 14. The Strangest Dancing Plague in History In history, there was an incredibly bizarre dancing plague that caused hundreds of people to uncontrollably dance for weeks on end until they died from exhaustion. Even now, no one knows what happened or why this dancing phenomenon persisted for so long. Let's turn back the clock to July 14, 1518. 
a woman named Frau Trophy from Strasbourg left her house and began dancing. She walked and danced like that for hours until she collapsed, sweating profusely, convulsing on the ground. After hours of joyous dancing, Frau Trophy's body eventually couldn't withstand the severe exhaustion. After getting some rest, she woke up and resumed the frenzied dancing to the bewilderment of her family. Her body was bruised, and she had bleeding from the strain of the movements. But the bizarre dancing affliction didn't stop with Trophy. It quickly spread throughout the city. Initially, around 30 people started dancing tirelessly in both private homes and public places, similar to what Trophy did. Eventually, up to 400 people were wildly dancing in the streets at the peak of this epidemic. The uncontrollable chaos over about two months led to many deaths from heart attacks, strokes and exhaustion. It is reported that at the height, up to 15 people died each day. In total, about 100 people perished in this body-induced frenzy. According to many researchers, this epidemic may have originated from the consumption of hallucinogenic fungi by the woman. What do you think? Feel free to comment and share your thoughts. Number 13. Viking helmets didn't have horns. In books, movies, or illustrations, Viking warriors, the ancient ancestors of modern-day Northern Europeans, are often depicted wearing distinctive and impressive helmets with horns when they went into battle. This imagery is popularized because, when excavating their ancient graves, a pair of animal horns is often found, leading people to believe Vikings adorned their helmets with horns. In reality, archaeologists and in-depth researchers have affirmed that those horns buried with the dead were merely vessels for drinking, replacing the need for cups so they could drink while on horseback. Wearing helmets with horns in battle would have been very dangerous. Number 12. The myth of 300 Spartans holding off 1 million Persian soldiers for three days. To prepare for the invasion of Persia, 30 small Greek city-states, along with Sparta and Athens, organized a military alliance. Sparta had the most powerful military force and was chosen to lead this alliance. Many sources in books, media, and films suggest that only 300 Spartans directly faced and held off more than 1 million Persian soldiers for three days. It's true that 300 Spartan soldiers stood against the advancing Persian forces, but alongside them, there were numerous warriors from other Greek city-states in the alliance. History often overlooks the presence of 4,000 Greek soldiers fighting alongside the Spartans before they withdrew. Also, during the final valiant defense against the Persians, 1,500 Greek soldiers fought alongside the 300 Spartans. This diminishes the grandeur of the 300 warriors compared to popular imagination. Additionally, historical analyses now suggest that the Persian army had around 70,000 to 300,000 soldiers, not over 1 million as believed in ancient times. Number 11. France was the starter of chemical warfare in World War I. At the dawn of the 20th century, military powers worldwide feared that future wars would be as much decided by chemistry as by infantry, so they signed an agreement at the 1899 Hague Convention banning the use of poison gas. Germany is often blamed for initiating chemical warfare in World War I, but it was actually the French who used it first. Gas masks, another French invention during the war, were essential because before using poison gas, one had to protect themselves from it. The Germans later escalated chemical warfare using their own toxic gases. At this point, French soldiers were very confident due to their possession of gas masks technology. However, the French gas masks filters were ineffective against the German toxins, and they were too airtight, causing soldiers wearing them to die even faster than those without. Number 10. The secret of the first U.S. President George Washington's teeth. Did you know that the first U.S. President George Washington had really bad teeth? If you did, leave a comment below. Most Americans know that George Washington had bad teeth, but the story behind his teeth is more than what most people know. Perhaps due to gum disease, Washington had to extract his first tooth at the age of 24 in 1756. From then on, his dental condition worsened. He endured not only tooth hackers, but also the judgmental looks of others every time they glimpsed his difficult-to-look-at teeth. 
in the 1770s and 1780s, he began wearing a set of dentures made from various materials, including alloys, hippopotamus ivory, walrus ivory, cow's teeth, horse teeth, and even human teeth. At least two pairs of Washington's dentures, made between 1789 and 1795, contained human teeth. However, it's unknown whose teeth they were. Dentists during Washington's time frequently collected teeth from clients so they could find the right size and color for dentures. To meet this demand, poor individuals, both white and black, slave and free, sold teeth for money. The myth that Washington wore dentures made of wood probably arose because the ivory used for his dentures discolored, resembling wood grain. Washington's teeth often turned yellow, likely due to his fondness for drinking red wine. Number 9. The Age of Witch Hunts in Europe Among the most horrifying events in history are the witch trials that led to the torture and execution of thousands, mostly women. Some of the most famous witch trials occurred in 15th century France, 16th century Scotland, and 17th century Massachusetts. Victims wrongfully accused of being witches were often tortured and then executed. Witches were scapegoated because they were associated with rumors of the spread of plagues, devastating livestock deaths, male impotence, or calls for storms. Due to these rumors, people gradually started believing that unexplained phenomena, misfortune, or anything inexplicable were caused by witches. One of the most common and brutally evaluated methods to interrogate suspected witches was the use of water. The accused were brought to a pond, lake, or river. Then their hands were tightly tied behind them before being thrown into the water. For people of that time, water was considered a sacred element that could test whether a person was a witch or not. If the person genuinely was a witch, they would float on the water. In cases where the accused did not float, proving their innocence, there was a high risk of drowning. Only a few lucky ones were brought ashore in time, while most others drowned during the water ordeal. Number 8. The Roman Arena The ancient Roman Emperor Commodus was eccentric and insane, much like many other emperors of that era. He enjoyed bestowing titles upon himself, such as when, close to death, Commodus Commodus commanded people to call him Hercules, the son of the god Jupiter. Additionally, he ordered the renaming of months to correspond with his titles and names, such as Commodus, Augustus, Amazonius, Invictus, etc. In 190, this Roman emperor even changed the name of Rome to Commodus. The Senate was not allowed to object and had to fulfill all the emperor's irrational commands. Commodus especially liked performing as a gladiator in public. He was skilled with a sword and enjoyed killing wild animals in the Roman arena. Perhaps due to this interest, he organized up to 735 gladiatorial games in the arena, forcing the public to attend and no one dared to disobey. To eliminate the imperfect, Commodus ordered the gathering of all the disabled, dwarfs and mentally disturbed individuals, making them fight in the arena. Do you find this historical truth terrifying? Leave a like and comment to let me know. Number 7. The shortest war in world history only lasted 38 minutes. The 38-minute conflict between Britain and the Sultanate of Zanzibar in East Africa in 1896 is considered the shortest war in world history. This brief war is believed to have started after the sudden death of Sultan Hamad bin Thuwaini on August 25, 1896. The sudden death of the Sultan sparked power struggles within Zanzibar. Specifically, the Sultan's cousin Khalid bin Bargash arranged a coup, quickly seized the palace, and took power with the support of Germany. This went against the political interests of the United Kingdom, prompting the British military to send an ultimatum and deploy forces to besiege the palace. Khalid had only one royal yacht and about 3,000 defenders, while Britain had a fleet of over five warships. The conflict erupted and Khalid was said to have fled the palace, leaving his army to fight. However, Khalid's flag still flew over the palace, and the British considered it a refusal to surrender. They tore down the flag, completing the conflict in just 38 short minutes. With such brevity, what kind of fight was it, folks? It's truly a meaningless battle, isn't it? If you agree, give my video a like.
Next, we'll move on to a fascinating historical truth that's also quite humorous. Number 6. Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte In Napoleon's time, sycophantic courtiers seeking an impressive image for him coined the term great little man for him. According to conventional wisdom, military leaders should be tall, but Napoleon himself wasn't particularly tall compared to other generals. Additionally, British clergy under Napoleon often described him as a short man. Furthermore, when Napoleon became emperor, he was frequently obscured by towering bodyguards around him, who were usually tall and imposing, with the shortest being at least six feet tall. Therefore, Napoleon appeared small among these giants. Misunderstandings about Napoleon's height were exploited by his enemies to contribute to lowering his image, speaking about him disparagingly and gradually convincing people that Napoleon was short. That's why everyone thinks he was quite short. However, in reality, Napoleon was over 5 feet 7 inches, which was quite tall for his time. In fact, his height was higher than the average height of Frenchmen at that time. Number 5. The Persian Grand Vizier Sahib ibn Abad always carried a library of books. Sahib ibn Abad was born in Persia in 938. When his father passed away, ibn Abad was only 7 to 8 years old and was raised by his father's friend. He became the Grand Vizier of Persia, always carrying a library of books with him. Ibn Abad is believed to have made significant contributions to the development of Persian culture. He supported the development of poetry, having extensive knowledge on various topics from the books in his library. When the Samanid Emperor invited Sahib Ibn Abad to be the Grand Vizier, he replied that he couldn't agree because of his library. Later, the Emperor sent 400 camels to transport all the books of this scholar, including 60 camels carrying dictionaries. Anyone here who loves books like this Grand Vizier? Comment and let me know. Number 4. The entire Netherlands sentenced to death. On February 16, 1968, the Inquisition Court in Spain issued a death penalty order for all residents of the Netherlands by order of King Philip. This special court was established by King Charles V in 1522. The terrifying sentence was due to the majority of the Dutch population at that time following the Protestant faith, while the Inquisition Court in Spain had the task of prosecuting those with unorthodox religious beliefs. Before this, to suppress the opposition of the Dutch people, King Philip not only oppressed the Protestant faith but also imposed taxes. As an inevitable consequence, Philip's autocratic policies led to a rebellion starting from the nobility in 1567. This Spanish king appointed Fernando Álvarez de Toledo, a renowned commander, to suppress the uprising and executed 1800 nobles. All these events led to the frightening order from Spain to execute all Dutch residents of the Protestant faith. Number 3. Trail of Tears Since the European colonization of the United States, Native Americans have endured many brutal actions. In 1829, the gold rush began in Georgia, led by the Cherokee people. This prompted the government to forcibly relocate Native Americans to take over resource-rich lands in the Deep South. From 1830 to 1850, about 100,000 people from the Cherokee, Muscogee, Seminole, Chickasaw and Choctaw nations were forced to leave their settlements and undertake a journey to a new location west of the Mississippi River, called the Indian Territory. Cherokee people were confined to small camps like animals. Not only that, they were not allowed to pack or prepare supplies for the journey and had to leave immediately. Their homes were quickly looted and burned. Within a few weeks, around 17,000 people were transported to concentration camps. Cherokee people were not provided with adequate medicine or food and went hungry to the point of eating tree bark. Weather conditions were extremely harsh. They had to walk hundreds of kilometers in snow and rain, were loaded onto boats to cross rivers in Tennessee, Ohio, Mississippi, Illinois, and Arkansas. Many traveled hundreds of miles and thousands did not survive. Number 2. Stonewall Riots in 1969 On June 28, 1969, at the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village, gay men decided it was time to end the injustice against the LGBTQ community with the support of transgender and lesbian individuals. 
Stonewall Inn became a landmark in the history of the LGBTQ community, and that pivotal day changed the United States and the world. In the 1960s, homosexuality was still illegal, and spontaneous police raids on gay bars were common. On June 28, 1969, the New York City police raided a gay club in Greenwich Village. The police were brutal, pulling staff and attendees onto the streets. The bar was closed, leading to uprisings in the LGBTQ community, many led by transgender activist Marsha P. Johnson. They all chanted slogans like gay power, the rebellious spirit resonated throughout the city. It was the uprising of the LGBTQ community. Number 1. Bengal Famine of 1943 the Bengal Famine of 1943 is one of the worst man-made famines recorded in human history. Before the 1943 famine, Bengal had experienced two major famines in the past. One occurred in 1770 and was controlled by 1772, and the other occurred from 1873 to 1874. The main causes of past famines in Bengal were drought, crop failure, combined with high rice prices, leading to the deaths of millions. In reality, data shows that there was plenty of rainfall during the worst period of the 1943 famine. However, due to Japan occupying Burma, a major rice supplier to Indian regions, and various crop diseases, there was a shortage of food. Mostly, the catastrophe seems to have stemmed from wartime inflation and panic buying, along with the government's rationing and increased taxes. Because the British feared that Japan would invade India and seize the grain, they also seized a large amount of rice to prevent it from falling into enemy hands. All these factors caused prices to soar, making food too expensive for the poorest people in Bengal. About 3 million people perished in the Bengal Famine of 1943. So we have explored 22 historical truths that are absolutely banned from being taught in schools. Which one impressed you the most? For me, I find the dancing disease quite intriguing. Comment on which event you liked the most. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to stay updated with our latest videos. See you in the next videos.